shape. One of the ways in which we can use matrices, uh, certainly from a point of view of computing and uh, graphics on a computer screen, is if we want to change uh, the position of an object, either to translate it left or right, to rotate it, to reflect it, we can actually employ matrices in order to do that. So that's what we're going to have a look at just now. And we'll have a look, first of all, at the idea of a transformation matrix. So we, we have to introduce a matrix which has got the information in it to do a particular transformation. And in a two-dimensional plane, we're going to assume that because we're dealing with uh, two coordinate points, x, y, our transformation matrix is going to be a two by two transformation matrix. And the idea is that we have an original point and we have an image point, A and B. So if A is a matrix or, or variable matrix, or it's got a, the, the points in it, x and y, um, if we want to find out the coordinates of the new point, if we call them F x dash and y dash, just being the images of those points, then we have to find a matrix. Um, if we want to go, if we have matrix A, which is the original points, we need to think, well, what can we multiply that matrix by to get our new coordinate points? Okay, so if we make B the blue one, yeah. So the question is, uh, the unknown in all of this is usually, um, how do we then uh, transform M? But if we know what the, the matrix is, we can then successfully work out our new coordinate points. So let's have a look uh, at something that we can do. In order to deduce the elements of our transformation matrix, we have to start looking at what happens to the different points. And just for the next few minutes, I'm going to try and explain how we can do some of our reflecting either the X or the y-axis, and we do that by considering the effect that it has on each of the coordinates. So, for instance, let's have a look at uh, reflecting in the y-axis. And if we reflect uh, a coordinate in the y-axis, we have our point, which would be x, y. And if we reflect it over the x-axis, the thing that actually changes sign is the x-coordinate. It becomes the negative of that. So really what we want to do is we want to come up with a matrix that when we multiply our values x and y that turn it into negative x and y. In other words, what we're looking for is we want to turn the, our new point is going to be effectively the negative of the original x value plus none of the original y value. And we want the y coordinate, new y coordinate, to be none of the x value and just one lot of the y because there's no change to it. And if we can come up with an expression in terms of x and y for the new point, then all we need to do is extract the coefficients, negative 1, 0, 0, and what positive 1, and we put them into this matrix here. And that becomes our transformation matrix so if we can be, if we if we can be familiar with what it is we want the x and y coordinates to do we can come up with an expression in x and y for that we simply take the coefficients and that becomes our transformation matrix we can apply that by looking at the reflection in the oh sorry so what we're seeing here is that this negative one zero zero negative one is a fixed matrix for reflecting any point in the y-axis okay so if i take uh, the point for instance one three and i multiply it by the transformation matrix zero one negative one zero zero one if i multiply those two matrices together i'll get negative one plus zero is negative one and 0 plus 1 times 3 is 3, I'll end up with the coordinate point negative 1, 3, which of course is the reflection. If that were 1, 3, I would expect the reflection in the y-axis to be negative 1, 3. Okay, so that matrix is a fixed matrix which represents 
a, a reflection in the y axis. We can have a look at what we might do to reflect uh, a point in the x axis. And using the same kind of idea, if you look at the graph on the left here, we can see that to reflect it in the x axis, the x coordinate remains the same, but it's the y coordinate that becomes negative. In other words, uh, for the x coordinate, we're really looking for just one x, and we want no y. And for the y coordinate, we want that to change from y to negative y, so we don't want any x, and we want the negative of what the y value was. So again, if you can come up with that expression in an algebraic form, that's our 1x plus 0y, and that's your 1 and 0. And then you've got 0x minus 1 lot of y, you end up with 0, negative 1. And that gives you your transformation matrix in uh, associated with a reflection in the x-axis. So these are fixed quantities. Uh, that we can use any time you want to uh, reflect a point in one of those axes, you can uh, introduce that matrix and that will give you your result. Okay. The other thing we want to have a look at is a rotation of a point around the origin, only the origin at the moment. Um, so we'll have a look at that. I'll just kind of do this and what we want to do is to have a look at a rotation clockwise about the origin a clockwise rotation in this direction and if we have a look at the graph here if we have the point x y and we rotate it clockwise then the x element of the coordinate this distance here is going to be this, this distance now which becomes the the negative y version of the new coordinate so that's why our y coordinate is now the negative of the x and for our original y element that's now going to be the positive x value so that's why when we look at the resultant coordinate we're really looking for the point y negative x so the original x y will become y negative x. If I put some numbers into that, if we have the point 3, 2, under a clockwise rotation about the origin, that point would become 2, negative 3. Okay, what matrix would help us do that? Well, all we need to do is to think what are our expressions that we want for x and y. So, if you do it at the left hand side, for the x, remember the top one's going to be our x value and the bottom line's going to be our y value. So what we want to do is we want the, the new y value, uh, so the new x value to be 1y. So for the x value, we actually want 0 of the original x and we want 1 of the original y. And that will give us our new x coordinate. For our new y coordinate, which is negative x, we want negative 1 of the original x coordinate, and we want none of the original y coordinate. So, I, d I wanted to do that without showing you everything on the, at the one time. So that's me basically deriving what I've just got up on the screen. So there's our 0, x plus 1, y, negative x plus zero y and that means we take our coefficients and that gives us our rotation matrix 90 degrees clockwise about the origin which again is a fixed one um, and you can always use that we'll come up uh, shortly with a kind of general rotation matrix but that's a fixed matrix for any 90 degree clockwise rotation about the origin okay so what we're going to do just now is we're then going to have a look at how to basically use that same system to derive two other ones. Okay, so uh, if you're still with me, example 13a, derive the matrices associated with clockwise direction of pi gradients. Actually, doesn't matter if it's clockwise or anticlockwise. A rotation of pi radians or 180 degrees will take us uh, a complete 
and at half turn or round, it doesn't matter which direction. But what we do need to try and just think about, what we're doing is deducing uh, things at the moment. And if we stick with just a, a point on the, um, in the first quadrant, we'll call it X and Y. If we wanted to rotate that clockwise by 180 degrees or pi radians, then we can see that we'll end up with a bit of rotational symmetry. What was X becomes negative X. And what was Y becomes negative Y. So we're looking for a rotation matrix that converts the original points X, Y into the point negative X to negative Y. So we're thinking of our new image point has to be uh, an, e an expression in terms of x and y. So our new x coordinate, the, we want the new x coordinate to be negative x. So we want negative one lot of the original x and we want no amount of the y coordinate. For the new y coordinate it's negative of what the y was so we want no amount of the original x and we want we want a negative, so minus, we want a negative one lot of the y coordinate. That's going to give us our negative y. And if we split those two matrices up into x and y, the original coordinate point, and then take the coefficients, which is what we've been doing in these examples, we end up with the values negative one, zero, zero, and negative one. In other words, there's our matrix Emma. So a matrix of negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1 will be our rotation of pi radians about the origin. Okay. If you can derive that yourself, that's great. You don't need to memorize it. And let's have a look at the other one. Anti-clockwise rotation of pi over 2 radians. So again, just have a wee quick look at the graph. If we just take a point here, x and y, we'll think about what happens to x and y as we rotate it anti-clockwise. Okay, now just like the positive clockwise one, we're going to end up reversing the roles of the X and Y. So instead of going X units along, it's actually going to go X units up. And instead of going Y units up, it's going to go Y units along. The only problem being that's negative. So if we look at the actual coordinates from the origin, we're going along the negative y units, and we're going up x units. So the original point x, y, so for instance, if the point was uh, 4, 2, my image point would be the negative of the y, which is negative 2, and the x was 4, so it would become our new y coordinate. Okay? So if it makes sense in numbers, you can throw it into help. But really, what we want to do now is to think my new x, y points has to be an expression in terms of x and y. So my new points here, so I've got my x number's got to be negative y, which means I want no x and I want minus one lot of y. And that would turn my x coordinate into negative one y. My new y coordinate has to be just one x. So I want one lot of x and I want no lot of nothing to do with the original y. And if I deconstruct that into x and y, the original point, my coefficients are there. Zero, negative one, one and zero. That's m. So my transformation matrix is going to be 0, negative 1, 1, 0. That is a fixed transformation matrix 
which is a rotation anti-clockwise of pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees okay so there's a, a number of these kind of uh, simple transformation matrices to be fair they all look very similar and they're easy to get mixed up so if you can actually understand how to make them up yourself and r instead of relying on memorizing them then they'll kind of make a wee bit more sense we're going to go and have a look about rotations that are not uh, 90 degrees or 180 degrees which require a wee bit more trigonometry but for the moment there are some of our kind of basic transformation matrices that we can use to uh, to change points on a coordinate grid i hope that's been of some use to you